Paul O'Neill up with the runners in second and third. Rips the Allen Watson pitch off the glove of Gary DeSarcina. Right to Randy Velarde, who runs to third and tags out Derek Jeter because the man on third, Chuck, Chuck Knobloch, didn't go anywhere. He didn't run. Joe Torre needs a hug. Joe said later, you judge a team by how they handle the bad things. We move to the bottom of the ninth. Troy Percival trying to nail it down. Angels up 7-6. Chili Davis, the free pass to first. Homer Bush comes in to pinch run. Jorge Posada up at the plate. And Jorge gets played like a saxophone. Great sacks. Five angel pitchers combined for 11 strikeouts. Yanks down to their last two outs. Tim Raines walks. Two runners on. Scott Brocious, who was two for four at this point, was not butter. Swerveless. No flavor. Flew out. Yankee fans praying for a miracle. Rich, how would they say, let's play for a miracle? We need a miracle. Thanks. Chuck Knobloch walks. Percival, three walks to the ninth. Keep hope alive in the Bronx. Derek Jeter already with four hits. Bounces one back to Percival. Look at the play by Percival. He joked later about his defense. I'm saying gold glove. I don't know about anybody else. Terry Collins pup. Joe Torre. Watch his team's 127-game streak with top 4-4-1 four, four, Tigers. Paul Bacco, I'm feeling you, Paul. I am feeling you. Deep to center pass to diving Tom Goodwin. Juan Encarnacion scores on Bacco's first career triple and his 248th career at bat. Stoudemire yanked after three and a third. He gave up eight hits. He said later, I just stunk. There's no getting around it. Bottom seven, no out. Eight, two Tigers. Sacks Jack. Rusty Greer bloops a single off Matt Anderson. Two runs score. Greer, a 304 hitter, two for five, 87 RBI this year. Rangers second in the AL and team RBI. They're down 8-4. Bottom nine, 8-5. Will Clark, you know what? I got to go. Two-run shot. His third in his last four games, 19th of the year. Rangers ninth in the AL in home runs. Two outs, Todd Zeal grounds to third. Joe Randa goes to second for the fourth out to end the game. Tigers hold on to win it 8-7. to seven. The Rangers lost coupled with Anaheim's win. Straight W. Johnny Damon swinging. Two batters later, Jose Offerman. Came into the game with a major league leading 388 average in the second half, but he looks at strike three. Top of the second, one nothing Jays. Dean Palmer swinging. Terry Pendleton now swinging. Jeff Conan, I believe you get the theme now. Swinging. Clemens struck out the side in the second. Top of the third. Clemens against Sal Fasano. Looking. Six strikeouts through three innings for Clemens. Top of the fifth now. Terry Pendleton at the plate again. Swinging, that's 200 strikeouts in the season for the Rocket. Tenth time in his stellar career that he's had 200 or more. Top of the seventh, Pendleton goes down swinging again. He struck out three times. We showed you all three. Top of the eighth, Sal Fasano struck out three times also. Clemens struck out 16 through eight innings. Top of the ninth, Roger still in the game, working up a sweat, and he's still hot. Johnny Damon swinging for number 17. Next batter, Larry Sutton. Looking, strike three, 18 strikeouts for Clemens on the night. That gets you 18 Ks on the wall. The most Ks ever hung for a Blue Jays pitcher. Next batter trying to strike out the side and end the game. Oh, Offerman just grounds to Craig Griebeck. Sort of anticlimactic. Well, 18 strikeouts, you'll have to settle for that. And Clemens does. Wins his 11th straight decision in... And on Mike P. On and cracking. 24th Jack of the year, third in five games, three nothing Mets. When Barry Bonds hit his 400th home run on Saturday, the fan who caught it did not accept a check from another fan for $5,000. He only wanted to meet Barry. Earl Hershiser was so impressed by the gesture that he gave the guy's family a check for five grand. Bottom one, Bonds looking for 401, tells Rick Reed, mm, you not my mm, daddy. 27th home run of the year, Giants down 3-1. Top second, some D from the G-Men. Carlos Baerga, slow roller up the middle. Rich Aurelia, I don't need no glove. Just give me some love. Getting a little freaky with the leather. Aurelia making up for an 0 for 3 day at the plate. Mets trying some D of their own. Aurelia with the foul pop-up. Piazza, nice hustle. Cannot hold on. Bottom four, Jeff Kent on first. Charlie Hayes hits the blooper to left. Todd Hundley having troubles to left all year. Misplays it, falls in front. Kent goes to third. He'd later score. Hundley 0 for 3 on the day at the plate. Bottom six, 6-3 six, Giants. Bonds on deck, two men on. Dennis Cook walks Aurelia. Not a good move. Barry Bonds representing the single to right. Brian Johnson scores. Giants win it 7-3. Bonds 2 for 5. He's hitting 285. He had those two RBI in the game. Bobby Valentine 
can only ponder his team's playoff hope. <laughs> and the scoreboard watching for home runs too. Bottom of the first, watching for a home run from Big Mac. No score. Crowd to its feet, and he brings him to its feet on their tippy toes. But Todd Dunwoody on the track makes the catch. McGuire still with 53. Same inning. Runners on first and second. Back to the game. And yet they've Ron Gann at the plate. Robbed by Kevin Ory, still no score. Bottom of the fourth, we have a score. It's one nothing Cardinals. Bases full of Cardinals for guess who? Mark McGuire. Uh oh. But he busts out the walk and sick. Oh. Oh. Rafael Medina walks in, forcing Tom Lampkin, two nothing cards. It's three two Marlins though in the top of the eighth when rookie Alex Gonzalez plays insurance man against Donovan Osborne. First major league home run for him. 4-2 Marlins on the Gonzalez homer. It's 4-3 Marlins, bottom of the eighth. McGuire, and the man on, grounds to third to end the eighth inning. Nonetheless, that's all the fans wanted to see. Come on, there's an inning left. McGuire 0 for 4 with a ribby. Marlins win. Mark, Gra Mark Grace tried to cauterize them. Blistering no one in particular with his comments after Monday's 12 to 3 loss to Houston. That was a joke, he said. I'm humiliated when the other dugout is laughing at you. I've been on some lousy Cubs teams, and I don't think any of them played this bad. Would the Cubs bounce back in Cincy? Well, would it rain in Sammy's parade? Would it rain on anybody's parade? You'll see here, Sammy would not provide the home run that the fans wanted, but he provided a single, which was just fine for him and the Cubs right here because it scores Lance Johnson in the top of the first, one nothing Cubs. Now down 2-1 of the Cubs, top of the third. Sosa's second at bat with two on, takes Dennis Reyes down the left field line. Johnson and Mark Grace come on down. Tight Cubs take a 3-2 lead on Sosa's 128th and 129th. RBIs of the season, but they trail 8-7 to the Cubs in the top of the seventh. Newest Cub, Gary Gaetti facing John Hudek with a man on, and Gaetti got it. Hit pretty good. To Reggie right. Sanders makes a yeoman effort in right, but it just, just goes over his glove. Two-run shot for Gaetti is 12th. Cubs take a 9-8 lead, but we're tied at nine in the bottom of the seventh. Still too early for Rod Beck. Terry Mulholland walks Jeffrey Hammonds with the bases loaded, and that's your go-ahead run. 10-9 Reds is your score. Top of the ninth, Sammy Sosa, the tying run against Gabe White, swinging. And the Reds go on to win 10 to 9. Sosa and the Cubs bumming. The Reds win 10 to 9. About his confrontation with Sosa, Gabe White said, I made up my mind I was going to go at him hard. If he was going to beat me, he was going to beat me with my best stuff. As for Sosa, he said, I was just looking for a good pitch to hit. I know I'm not going to hit a home run every time. Junior at the plate facing Charles Nagy, swinging. Junior went one for four on the night, did not home. Dan Wilson still on the DL with that ankle injury, so Kenny Lofton goes to taking third. advantage. Joe Oliver throws it into left. Lofton come on down. Oliver had two throwing errors in the game. It's 3-1 Cleveland. 4-1 Cleveland when Lou Pinello would watch it get worse in the form of Manny Ramirez, ferocious. 432 feet. 31st homer on the season, 6-1 Indians. It's 6-4 try, bottom of the six. Runners on second and third, one out. Ramirez needs a triple for the cycle. And he hits one deep to left center. If it takes a funny hop, he might get it. Takes a normal hop. So only two runs score, and Ramirez gets the old double. 8-4 Indians. 10-4 Indians, top of the eighth with two out. Joey Cora pops one down the left field line. Travis Fryman running hard, running with his back to the plate. Well, he does not get the ball, but he does catch the post with his face. It's a broken nose, taken to the hospital for overnight observation at the corners facing Maglio Ordonez. Rips down the left field line. Robin Ventura scores from the third, but Jeff Abbott scores all the way from first to make it 2-0 White Sox. And here's why Abbott came around all the way from first, because Sirhoff picked the ball out of the wall, making it a live ball instead of a ground rule double. That's why everybody came around. Now here's something wacky. Roberto Alomar fouls one off the padding of the wall and off the padding of the ball girl. Yeesh. Ouch. Ouch. Put that one on the board. Oh, Bottom of the seventh, now 3-1 White Sox. Put this one on the board. Frank Thomas, now batting 423 with seven homers career against Mike Messina. The two-run shot is 24th of the season, makes it 5-1. And now Albert Bell up next, our pick to click. This one off of Alan Mills. 13th time, Bell and Thomas have homered in the same game in a White Sox uniform in two years. And it's Bell's 39th home run of the season that made it 6-1 White Sox.
for Boston, and his knuckleball usually means trouble for his catcher. His ball is a knuckleball, so it does something different, you know, each pitch. So you have to try and learn to relax as much as you can. And from there, you have to try and just battle and try and catch every pitch possible. Well, on top of the second, Mike Blowers on first. Wakefield delivers. It gets past Veritek for the Red Sox. American League high 25th pass ball. Blowers to second. Now with the runner in scoring position, Ben Greaves swinging. Next batter, Scott Spezio swinging. Next batter, Miguel Tejada. Veritek readies himself for another pass ball. The 14th of the season with Wakefield on the hill. Blowers to third. Now with Blowers on third, he gets Tejada swinging, does Wakefield. A's 0 for 8 with runners in scoring position through the first three. Top of the fourth, Scott Spezio at the plate. Mo Vaughn, full extension, flips to Wakefield to end the fourth. Bottom of the seventh now. Score tied at two for the aforementioned Darren Lewis. 0 for his last previous 18 at bat. So what? Takes Kenny Rogers deep into the Boston night over the monster. Seventh of the season, and the Sox win it 3 to 2 on only the 21st homer of Lewis's career. And just Astro started with at least 10 wins and call him bus drive because he was taking the Braves to school. Walt Weiss, 291 hitter, done. Gerald Williams should have used his sand wedge. He was 0 for 5. After Chipper Jones swingle, Andres Calaraga, big cat, had nothing. Hampton had 12 strikeouts. Top six, Braves down 2 1. Javi Lopez on second. Michael Tucker rocking a fat bat over the head of Derek Bell. Lopez scores. Tucker, a ground rule double. His 25th double and 43rd RBI of the year were tied at 2. Jeff Bagwell on first, bottom six. Carl Everett rocks Kevin Millwood's world. It scores Bagwell. Everett with the double. Millwood said later, I had good stuff all night, just a couple of times. I needed to make a pitch and didn't. Bottom eight, two outs, runner in first. Ricky Gutierrez sends a shot to right center, but Andrew Jones, it's your world, kid. Jones making up for an 0-3 for day at the plate. You know, some teammates are whispering that he could be one of the best defensive center fielders ever. Top nine, Billy Wagner. Slow your roll, Billy. Gets Chipper Jones. Wagner said of Hampton, when a guy plays like he did, you feel for him and pick up your game a little bit. Wagner, 3-8 ERA, second best in the National League because he can bring some righteous heat. 98 miles per hour against Scott Rowland. And then Brown gets Rowland swinging for the strikeout. Five Ks in seven innings for Brown, and he still said later, I didn't have my best stuff. Greg Vaughn, a night after he hit his 43rd, Jack did not play out with the flu. Top five three-run pods, they get their groove from Ken Caminetti. As cool as the other side of the pillow. 25th of the year, he's got four homers in 37 career at-bats against Schilling. Pods up 4-1. Top nine, four three pods. Caminetti facing Mark Leida, the former MVP, done. 16th multi-homer game of his career. Said Caminetti, battling a sore back. When you try and hurt the ball, that's when you get hurt. I just put a nice, easy swing on it. What happens? I hit two home runs. Bottom nine, Trevor Hoffman in for the save. Bobby Estalela had no shot. He's only a 208 career hitter. Hoffman, 42nd save this year. Padres win it. Malicki's first pitch to Vladimir Guerrero. Oh, boy. He is just a stud. 32nd homer. one nothing Expos. Bottom of the six now, 2 on LA, 2 on for former Expo. Mark Grozelanek driving in. Gary Sheffield, 3-1 Dodgers. Bottom of the seventh, three-two Dodgers. Now Eric Young on third. There he is. Shane Bennett's pitch wild. Young come on down. The Dodgers needed that run because they'd go on to win four to three. Dave Malicki was good. He allowed just two runs over six and two thirds. He's six and two since coming over from the Mets on June. pitching. Runners on first and second were tied at six. Todd Helton at the plate rips it. Neffy Perez and Vinny Castilla, the aforementioned men on base, come on down to score. Rockies up 8-6, go on to win 11-6. The offensive star, however, was Angel Echeverria.